Hi, I'm Mary Gailey and I'm a product specialist and gourd artist with the Wellburn Gourd Farm. And today I'm going to be showing you a new project for working with gourds. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this gourd oil lamp with this pretty poinsettia stained glass design on the front. Now you can buy craft ready oil lamps from the Wellburn Gourd Farm and the nice thing about these is that they come all ready to go. They have the hole already drilled in the top for your insert and they come with the insert and they're already flattened on the bottom so that you know when you set them down they're going to be stable. But I happen to have some pear gourds on hand and so that's what I'm using today for our demonstration. Now the one thing I needed to do with my pear gourd is to drill the hole in the top for the insert and to make sure that it sat flat on the table. So to do that I sanded the bottom on a belt sander. So now I know I can set it down and it's not going to tip over. The products we're going to be using today are the Gourdmaster ink dyes in the apple red, the classic yellow, the rich mahogany, and the classic green. We're going to be using that applicator cube and some cotton rounds to apply the color to the gourd. And we're also going to be using the transparent pigment powders in a satin green and a shimmer gold along with the satin gourd varnish. Now I'm going to start with this gourd that I've already burned the poinsettia design on the front. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply the rich mahogany for the background color. Now there's a couple of ways that I can apply this color. And the first is to use the applicator cube that comes with your ink dye. And all you do is drop a few drops of the ink dye onto the applicator cube and let it soak in. These colors are really, really intense and it doesn't take a lot. So now that that's soaked into the cube, I just rub it on the surface of my gourd and you can see that color just flows evenly over the surface of the gourd. Just kind of work in circles and work the color in. When you get up to the line where your burn is, you can just take the little pad and work it right up close to that line. Now I highly recommend coloring in stages. I learned this the hard way. Um, what I do is color a little bit and then use my heat tool to dry the ink because this keeps you from putting your fingers into the wet ink and then transferring color into areas of the gourd where you don't want it. The other way to apply color to the gourd is to take the ink dye and put a few drops on your palette and then you can pick it up with your little cotton round just like that and apply it. in the same way and you can really move over a large area quickly this way and you just rub it in circles and you'll notice as I'm working into the area that's already dried the color blends beautifully. Now you can't do this with leather dyes because the leather dye dries so quickly and it's alcohol based that when you try to stop and start or blend colors you're going to get streaking and it's just not going to be pretty. So after we've colored the entire background with the rich mahogany, now we're going to start and, and we've got it heat set, we're going to uh, paint the poinsettia flower. For this, we're going to be using, I'm going to start with the apple red for the flower petals. And to apply it, I'm just going to put a little bit of the ink on my palette. And I'm going to be using this angle brush because that's going to help me get into all the little points of the flower. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the ink dye on my brush. Again, the color is very, very intense 
And so start out with a little, and if you want more, you can add some more. Just take the tip of that brush and lay it in the point of that petal. And then just move the ink along your wood burn line. Another way to apply the ink dyes when you're working in small areas is to use this fine tip applicator. You just dip a little bit into the ink dye on your palette and put your point right in there. And you can really get some fine work done. These are really handy because while they look like they're disposable, they're not. They're they're reusable. You can just um, rinse them in water and wipe them off with a paper towel, but just be careful not to pull or tug on them. All right, now that we have our flower petals all finished, we're going to take the classic green ink dye and we're going to paint the leaves in the same manner. And there you are, the poinsettia is all finished. I'm going to heat set the green and move on to the next step. Now that I've finished the flower portion of the design, I'm going to move on to the outer portion. Now this section I'm going to do in the satin green transparent pigment powder and we're going to try to make it look like a stained glass. So to use the pigment part powder, you just take this little scoop and put a little bit on your palette. Now I know it looks white. Most of them look white in the jar and you think, what's the big deal? But then when you start working with them, they're really, really pretty and they just give you that subtle shine and shimmer. Now this is a satin green. It also comes in a shimmer green, but I wanted a smoother look. So now I'm using the gourd varnish and I'm just putting a little puddle right there. And then we're going to mix the powder with the varnish. Now you don't have the same working time with the varnish that you do with the ink dyes. The ink dyes will stay wet for quite a while, but the varnish dries quicker, so you're going to have to move just a little bit faster. As I mix that, you can see a little bit of a shimmer coming up. And as I say, these colors are much more subtle than the ink dyes. Now it is transparent, so you're going to see the gourd through the color. And it's going to be thicker in some spots and thinner in some spots. But actually, that's the kind of look that I'm looking for. I don't know, when I look at the stained glass windows, you can see some of that swirly differences in the color and that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. The transparent pigment powders come in seven different colors but in two different finishes. There's the shimmer finish which is a little more sparkly and there's the satin finish, which gives a little smoother look, and that's what I'm using here today. So I'm just going to work my way around. Well, it looks like I've got it all. So the next step we're going to be putting a gold around the edge and for that I'm going to be using the same technique with the 
satin varnish, but with a shimmer gold transparent powder. So I just put a little bit of the gold shimmer in with the varnish that I had on my palette and I'm mixing those two together and you can just see some really swirly, pretty sparkly colors showing up. And using the same brush, I'm just going to pick up some of the gold with the varnish and start around the outer edge and you can see that rather than a smoother look, it's kind of shimmery and sparkly. I'm going to take some ink dye now instead of the varnish and I'm going to mix it with some of this gold shimmer and it's going to make this really pretty sparkly gold. Put it in the center of my poinsettia for that last little bit of sparkle and it just sets off the other colors. Dab off a little bit of extra. And so when your gourd is all dry, then you'll want to finish it with either the satin gourd varnish or a coat of the gourd protecting wax. And that will not only protect the painting on the surface of your gourd, but it'll also give it a nice subtle shine. So the colors will pop and you can really see those shimmery transparent pigment powders. Mm -hmm.